Hey friends, had a viewer ask me to post a video putting this tracker digger into action to see what it can do. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to get the most out of this digger using the all power for pinky lanyard and might even try my hand at some bow drill. So watch to the end of the video and you'll see what this thing can do. Okay, friends there you have it as you can see you can make fire with this tracker digger it is modeled after the Tom Brown tracker dig uh, tracker number two I don't own the tracker two I only use t1s uh, but if you find yourself using the cutting edge more than that toothy spine then I think the tracker digger is the knife you're looking for um, you can do anything that you can do with the tracker using this tracker digger, okay? Um, 
it is a smaller blade and so you're not going to get as much chopping power out of the T2 or this tracker digger as you will with a larger tool like the T1 or a small hatchet or an axe. It's not a hatchet, it's not an axe. None of the trackers are. But in just a minute, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of this tracker digger and the other trackers or any small chopper using that extended tang and the pinky lanyards. So here we go, let's get into that. Okay, the first bit of magic in getting the most out of your uh, out of your small choppers like this tracker digger or the t2 or the the tracker three or whatever is what i call a pinky lanyard just a pinky lanyard you can tell there's no chance that thing is going to go over my wrist and i don't want it to go over my wrist i want it to be on that pinky and what that's going to allow me to do is choke choke down on that handle i'm barely holding on to that thing and let me get the other pinky lanyard out of the way. And that's gonna allow me to get a lot more throw out of that chopping tool. No matter what knife it is, if you're using it to chop and you got a lanyard hole or can put a lanyard hole in there, try on that pinky lanyard and you can really get a lot of throw. I don't know how well that's coming into the video, but you can really get a lot of throw into that. And look, I, Watch my hand. I might have to slow this down, but watch my hand. I'm not even holding on to this punk. See that? And you, you're just murdering your way through that timber to chop it up. Really easy. Okay, I'm going to tie a pinky lanyard onto this brand new tracker here. Look how pretty that thing is. I forgot how pretty these trackers are when they're brand new. I bought this one just a couple weeks ago found a steal of a deal on it on eBay and I just had to get it man my trackers my other trackers haven't looked like this in a long long time look how beautiful that coating is incidentally I'm probably gonna take some of that coating off here on this baton ridge right there anyways none of that matters <laughs> I'm just gonna use this opportunity to show you guys how to tie a pinky lanyard onto your small choppers and yeah i i consider the tracker t1 to be a small chopper so because it's not a hatchet it's not an axe okay so anyways Let's see if i can get a hole in here obviously you're just going to run your cordage through there first okay and what I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off just by doing some sort of some sort of knot around one of the other ends. It doesn't doesn't matter. You're just gonna tie a knot over one of these or over over the other end. That's it. And I'm just gonna use a little granny knot, what I call a granny knot. Uh, Bushcraft survival YouTubers will t probably tell you this is a overhand knot, and it is, but I just call it a granny knot. And you're just tying that knot over your other, the other end of your line. And that's going to slip very easily. You want it to be sort of tight, you know, uh, have quite a bit of friction in there, but just tighten that up a little bit. Now, what I recommend especially for the for the tracker digger uh, is that you use a pair of gloves with this size this pinky ring to your hand with a pair of gloves on it a, a pair of, of uh, outdoor gloves so and I'll show you why that is here in a second because we're gonna fiddle around with that extended tang on the digger here in a second okay so you've got your loop right here a square knot that slips up and down the other your longer piece here okay now when you tie your pinky lanyard on go up through the bottom of the the lanyard here's the bottom of the blade right there your cutting edge there's your lanyard I'm gonna go up with my pinky up through the bottom of it and I'm just gonna wrap my hand around that 
handle. Now remember the purpose of this pinky lanyard. It's to get more throw into this chopper, okay? So choke down on it. Get down here where your hand is gonna be. Don't size it to here because that's not where you're gonna use that pinky lanyard. That's not where the magic comes in. The magic is back here where you're choking back on that, okay? Then all you do, you got a grip on your handle where you're choking, choking down on it and you adjust that slipping knot. Just push that punk right up to your finger and get her tight. However you have to do that, get her tight. Up through the bottom and get that, get that knot in there tight. Okay, again, with gloves on because that's where you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna be using gloves if you're if you're at all safety conscious or whatever, you're gonna be using gloves. So I've got this knot tight on my finger. I'll show you that, okay? It's tight. Now, <coughs> excuse my cigar cough. Okay, so tighten that punk up right there on your finger. Now, you can take your finger out and it'll be looser because you just twisted it. So with that, take this glove off here. With that on there tight, cinch up your knot a little bit because you've probably loosened up that granny knot, that overhand knot. And from here on your on your long end, this is where you're going to make a stop knot. It doesn't matter what kind of stop knot you put in it. You just want to stop this knot from rolling up, you know, sliding up this lanyard or up this other cordage here. You just want to stop it. That's going to keep this tight. Okay, so I'm just going to run a simple overhand knot through there because that's the easiest to move down to that to that sizing knot. Okay, get that sucker in there good. And if you want to, like I want to right now, I'm going to put another overhand knot in there. To really lock that sizing knot, that first knot that we put in, the very first knot, th that's going to make sure that knot doesn't slip down here. Okay, now let me get my glove back on. It's a little bit cold out here, but whatever. All right, again, your your using edge right here. This is your chopping edge up through the bottom of that lanyard with your pinky over over the end of your handle and I just turned a freaking T1 tracker which has never been used by the way uh, I just turned that knife into into an enormous chopping tool okay by choking back on that thing and giving it some giving it some power okay I just did that with a simple pinky lanyard Okay, now from here, obviously, I mean, you can leave this cordage on there if you think that you might want to harvest this pinky lanyard and use the cordage for something else, whatever. By all means, leave this, leave this hole, okay? I am going to cut this off, melt it, and whatever, okay? And, and I'll, I'll never take it off until, uh, until it wears out or I want to put another pinky lanyard on it, okay? But that's it. Also, I recommend a, I recommend the largest diameter. This, I believe, is quarter inch. It might be five sixteenths, but get the largest diameter cordage that you can to fit through your hole, okay? The reason for that is because you're gonna have this, this thing, you know, getting into your pinky right there, and that, that may be uncomfortable for you. So, that's how you get the most chopping power out of your small choppers. All right, the next tip I'm gonna show you for how to get the most out of this digger has to do with this extended tang right here. I'm a huge fan of extended tangs just for this purpose. And on the digger, it comes in especially handy because you do not have that toothy spine like you have on other outdoor knives, okay? Like the Tom Brown Tracker, for instance, okay? 
but this extended tang with just a tiniest bit of modification will help overcome that discrepancy okay and all it all it is is you're going to sharpen this extended tang now out of the box from the retailer it's going to come where the top of this blade or the top of this extended tang is a little bit squared off and it's got a little that black traction coating on it that's great but what i've done is i have sharpened this down to a point i've taken that square uh, that square edge off the top of it and i've just made it into a point and what that allows me to do is grab this tool on my timber and scrape away and with that i'm making very fine shavings um if you need to make a bird's nest or you know really really small fat wood pile or whatever and uh, that's it so take this extended tang knock that square edge off the top bring it to a point and there is absolutely nothing that you can't do with this track or digger that you can do with another tool like the tracker okay those two tips right there the pinky lanyard and that extended tang put a point on that thing and man i'm telling you you're going to get twice the freaking cutting edges out of this digger that you will with the tracker obviously and you're not sacrificing anything at all and that's the tracker digger in action guys thanks for watching my video I know I can be long-winded and my video editing, editing skills are that of a truck driver. Uh, special thanks to King Nomad, the YouTube viewer who requested this video. I had a great time making this video and doing bow drill and just chopping up some timber in the backyard. Uh, I hope I was able to show you everything that you were looking to see and maybe you'll consider the tracker digger as your next outside tool. You guys get outside, have some fun, and be safe about it.